In this video, you're going to learn how to write a sinusoidal equation given the maximum and the minimum points. And here are some formulas that you might want to write down and memorize. We'll talk about them as we go through the video. So the first thing we're given here is a max of 5 or 6 comma 3, that's a high point on the graph, and a minimum of 2 pi over 3 comma negative 1. What I like to do, just to visualize, is just to draw a rough sketch. So say, for example, if pi over 6 uh, comma 3 is right about here, and let's say the minimum here at 2 pi over 3, let's just say it's somewhere over here, uh, and that's going to put us down here at like negative 1. So I'll just put it right, right there. So basically our graph looks something like this. And then you can see what's interesting is from the maximum to the minimum, just like when you look at your basic cosine graph, see how the cosine starts at the maximum and then it goes down to the minimum? That's only half of one period or one cycle. So you can see that this graph actually would continue on like that, right, to complete one full period. So that's interesting. So let's take a look at that piece for a minute. So if we take this distance, which is 2 pi over 3 minus pi over 6, that's half of one period. So if we were to double this, that's going to give us what our period is. Okay, so let's go ahead and get uh, common denominators. I'm going to multiply the top here by uh, 2 and the bottom by 2. So that will give us 4 pi over 6 uh, minus 1 pi over 6, which is 3 pi over 6. And 3 pi over 6 is the same as pi over 2. And then times 2 is equal to pi. So now we know what our period is, is pi. But the reason we're finding the period is so that we can solve for this b value, this coefficient here that comes to the left or in front of the x. And there's a formula that you're going to want to use. The period is equal to 2 pi divided by b. So in this case, we know our period is pi. That's equal to 2 pi divided by b. You can cross multiply and see that 2 pi times 1 is 2 pi. That's equal to pi times b. Divide both sides by pi. And you can see that b is coming out to 2. So that's what this 2 value is right, right here. Now, we're going to show you how to write the graph as both a sine graph and a cosine graph. And there's more than one answer for these problems because it depends on what point you're using as the starting point. So for this first uh, one, let's go ahead and focus on the cosine graph. And cosine, see when you're at x equals 0, see how cosine starts at the maximum? And it kind of goes down from there. So let's pretend like this is a cosine graph starting here. Okay, so that means it's been shifted from the origin right pi over 6. Okay, and we're going to talk about that. So let's go ahead and uh, put our b value in, which is 2. Now let's talk about the amplitude. The amplitude is like how high the waves are. But when you measure that amplitude, you're really measuring it from the, the midline. Okay, so like when you look at cosine here, you say, well, hmm, you can see it has an amplitude of 1. It's like you're standing on the beach and you're basically saying, okay, how high are the waves? Well, you're not measuring from down here. You're measuring from this middle level, okay, which is the x-axis. So you could measure here, this is 1, or from the midline to the minimum, that's 1. When you think about the amplitude, it's like a, the absolute value. It's just distance, which is positive, which is 1. Now, if it's reflected, we could make it a, a negative at that point, but the actual amplitude itself is a, is a positive number. So what I like to do sometimes is I like to try to sketch in like a midline. And I can see that this is the midline right here. Uh, I can see from here to the minimum is 2, from here to the maximum is 2. So I can see that that amplitude is 2. Now, some students may have a little challenge doing that depending on the numbers that they give you. So you might want to use this formula right here, the max minus the min divided by 2. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the max, which is 3, minus the min, which is negative 1, divided by 2. When you subtract, it's like adding the opposite. That's 4 over 2 which is equal to 2. So that's going to be our, our A value, our amplitude, our vertical stretch. We've got our B value, which is 2. Now let's look at the K value. Now the K value you can see here, that's basically how far the graph has shifted up or down. And that midline is normally right here at the x-axis, right? You can see that's been shifted up 1. Again, depending on the numbers that you're given, it might be a little bit difficult to find this. So what you can use is this formula here. You can say it's the average of the max and the min. So that means you add the max and the min and you divide by 2. 
So let's go ahead and do that. So the max we said was 3 plus the minimum, which we said was negative 1, divided by 2. So that comes out to 2 divided by 2, which is equal to 1. So you can see this is shifted up one unit. Okay, so we've got our A, our B, and our K. How do we find our H value? Remember the H is the horizontal shift. It's our phase shift. And again, we said that cosine, we're going to work with that one first. Cosine starts right here at the maximum when X is 0. It's at that high point. So how do we get from uh, where this graph would normally start, which would be right here, okay, it's been shifted right pi over 6. So let's go ahead and put everything uh, together now. And what do we have? We have y equals our amplitude, which is 2, cosine, our b value, which is 2, x minus pi over 6. Now remember, whatever is grouped with the x has the opposite effect. So minus pi over 6 is actually shifting it right pi over 6. If this was plus pi over 6, it would be shifting it left pi over 6. And then our k value, we said it was shifting up 1. So this is our sinusoidal equation given the max and the min. Now you might say, well, Mario, what happens if I want to write this as a sine graph and not a cosine graph? Okay, now remember sine looks like this. Okay, if it hasn't been stretched or shifted, it starts here at the midline at the origin. It goes up to the maximum, back to the midline, down to the minimum, back to the midline, right? So that's your basic sine graph. Now, if we look at this graph here, see this point right here where it crosses the midline? This is like a quarter of a period, like one-fourth of the period. We said from the max to the min, that was half the period, right? So what's this distance here? Well, we said that uh, that came out to uh, pi over 2. So half of that's going to be pi over 4. So if I was to go another pi over 4 here to the left, right, see if I was to kind of graph this, what's pi over 6 minus pi over 4? Let's figure out what that is. We've got to get common denominators, so multiply top and bottom by 2, top and bottom by 3. So we have 2 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 is equal to negative 1 pi over 12. That means that when I graph this, it's going to be something like this, okay, Right here, this point is negative pi over 12, and you're right at that midline. Okay, now we're starting to see, okay, this looks a little bit more like a sine graph from here to here, right? Again, it, sine and cosine are basically the same graph. It's just like this S-shaped wave, this sinusoidal wave. It's just a matter of, you know, where's your starting point? Where's, you know, where's the initial point? If it uh, starts at the max, we think about a cosine. If it starts at the midline, we tend to think of the sine graph. So let's look at this as a sine graph now. Now what's interesting is the amplitude, the height of the waves, is going to be the same whether it's a sine or cosine. It's just the same graph, right? So that means this is going to be A is 2, same as this one. Sine, the period is going to be the same, okay? That's how long it takes to, to uh, complete one cycle or repeat. Now you might be saying, Mario, this 2, what's going on with this 2? Well, normally the period is 2 pi for sine or cosine. But when it's grouped with the x like this, it has the opposite effect. You're actually dividing the x values by 2, which is going to make the period just 1 pi. If this was 1 half, it would actually be multiplying the uh, x values by the reciprocal 2. So this has like the opposite effect. And then with our sine graph, we said normally the sine graph would start you know, right here at the, at the um, midline here, right at the... Um, when x is 0, it would start right at this point here. So you can see this graph is shifting actually left pi over 12 and up 1, right? So to shift to the left, this is actually going to be plus pi over 12. Remember, again, whatever is grouped with the x has the opposite effect. That plus pi over 12 shifts left pi over 12. And then the k value was the same for the cosine. It just shifted the graph up 1. So what's nice about, you know, you can start with either sine or cosine. The A, the B, the K are exactly the same. It's just a matter of the phase shift, the left and right um, shift. Now, you might be saying, Mario, aren't there other answers? And there are. Like, you could say, well, maybe I want to start my sine graph right here, and I'm going to go like that and make this the beginning point. And that's fine. The only thing that will change, though, is this phase shift, this H value here, okay? And uh, same thing with cosine. You could say, well, maybe I want the cosine graph to start right here and go like that and just say that I shifted it right so much and up so much. So a lot of correct answers. I tend to pick the ones that are where it's not shifted too far from the origin. 
and um, you got it. Now, if you want to see another example, maybe you want to test yourself, uh, go ahead and follow me over to that video that I did right there. We'll get some more practice. Maybe you can pause the video and try one on your own. I'll see you in that video.